Good morning. We come in our daily Bible reading to Revelation chapter 19. And while in chapter 18, we see the great destruction of Rome as engineered, authored by, and judged by God. We recognize in chapter 19 that there is going to be this battle. There's going to be a great battle between the spiritual forces of darkness and those of the light. And the question would simply be, who is going to win? And Revelation makes it clear. The theme of the book is that there is victory in Jesus. And so we know the lamb that was slain, the son of God, Jesus the Christ, and those who are with him will have victory. Before we read Revelation chapter 19, return with me to chapter 17, though, and read what perhaps the theme verse of Revelation in chapter 17 and verse 14. They will make war on the lamb, and the lamb will conquer them, for he is a Lord of lords and king of kings, and those who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. You see, that's what's going to happen in chapter 19 is we're going to see that the lamb is going to be victorious. The king of kings, the Lord of lords, he is here and he is going to win this battle. And the question will only be, which side are we on? Read with me today in Revelation chapter 19, beginning in verse 1. After this, I heard what seemed to be the loud voice of a great multitude in heaven crying out, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for his judgments are true and just, for he has judged the great prostitute who corrupted the earth with her immorality and has avenged on her the blood of his servants. Once more they cried out, Hallelujah! The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God who was seated on the throne, saying, Amen! Hallelujah! And from the throne came a voice saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, small and great. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters, and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder, crying out, Hallelujah! For the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true words of God. Then I fell down on his feet to worship him, but he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Chapter 19, you have to be moved by this worship of God, this recognition of how mighty he is. We talk all the time about how powerful God is. In Genesis 1, he spoke and this world came into creation. We read the Exodus account and we see God separate the Red Sea. We see him hand down the Ten Commandments. We see him leading his people. But in Revelation, we have all these beautiful pictures of heaven in which all who are around are constantly found doing what? Praising, worshiping, and humbling themselves before our great God. God is amazing. In his judgment, he is worthy to be praised. Verse 1 and 2, salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for his judgments are true and just. When God is in control, when we are in his presence, he is worthy to be praised. Verse 4, excuse me, 5, praise our God, all you his servants who fear him small and great. He has a wonderful plan that includes us, and we should praise him for that. We see that in verse 6, 7, and 8. Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. You see, all who are in heaven recognize God's greatness, and we need to recognize that, but we have to recognize it now. There's a real temptation for us, isn't there? To kind of move on with our day and say, yeah, yeah, God's God's interesting, God's powerful. But do we act on it? Do our prayers sound anything like this? Thank you, God, for your control. Thank you for your judgments. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your power. God, you are almighty. You are in charge. Help me to submit my will to yours. Recognize there are great gifts given by God in that grace and forgiveness. But it all hinges upon Jesus. Are we going to submit to the king? Are we going to accept the king's terms? The king of kings and lord of lords. Notice that they are ready to be clothed with fine linen and bright and pure. But verse 8, what is that fine linen? The righteous deeds of the saints. And then there's this interesting scene with John and the angel. And the angel actually has John bow down and worship him. That's what John thinks he should do. And the angel says, do not do that. Don't worship me. Who do you worship? I am a fellow servant with you, brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. You, what would we say? worship God. And so we recognize that as powerful as this scene is, God alone is worthy of our worship. And so what makes us recognize what worship is? Well, first of all, God gets to define that. But in this chapter, to be with God is to do what? To hold to the testimony of Jesus, to act righteous as our righteous king has decreed. And so we see the great power of God illustrated and why we need to add praise to our prayer 
into our daily life. But read with me now in verse 11. Then I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems. And he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. And the armies of heaven arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and with a loud voice he called to all the birds that fly directly overhead, Come, gather for the great supper of God, to eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all men, both free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth with their armies gathered to make war against him who was sitting on the horse and against his army. And the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet who in its presence had done the signs by which he had deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped its image. These two were thrown alive in the lake of fire that burns with sulfur, and the rest were slain by the sword that came from the mouth of him who was sitting on the horse, and all the birds were gorged with their flesh. It's very interesting, a couple of overall notes about chapter 19 here. We expect this great war, and we see this great battle. It is Jesus. It is the beast. This is everyone. This is everything. This is the battle. And just like that, the battle's over. Did you notice that? As you're reading this in verse 17, you see an angel and they say, come gather, verse 18, for the great supper of God to eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains. In verse 19, I saw the beasts and the kings of earth, their armies. They were gathered to make war. And then in verse 20, the beast was captured. God is faithful. God is powerful. What we have to take from Revelation chapter 19 is a couple key points. Number one, God says he will win. We know Jesus is going to win. We know he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And we want to be with him, those who are called, chosen, and faithful. But notice in verse 17, this victory is assured. Come gather for the great supper of God to eat the flesh of kings. There is going to be victory. And then in verse 19, the devil, as we call, and his angels, or as we say specifically here, the beasts and the kings of earth, they're coming to wage war. And then point number two, they are no match for God. It is immediately over. In fact, we're going to see in chapter 20 in particular that even the devil himself is no match for God, no match for Jesus the Christ. And why might that be? Because Jesus is the victorious Son of God. There is no power like God's power. There is no power like that of the Son. And you see those images here. Look up back to verse 12. His eyes are like a flame of fire. His power is judgment. On his head are many diadems. He is the King of kings. He's not limited in any way. He is king over all. And he has a name written that no one knows but himself. Verse 13, he's clothed in a robe, dipped in blood. Unlike the rulers on the other side, the kings of the earth, Satan himself, the beast in its power, Jesus isn't in it for himself. Jesus is sacrificial. He is the lamb that was slain. You see, our great king died for you and me. That should be a sobering reminder of how wonderful it is to serve a merciful God, that Jesus cares. Jesus knows what it's like to live like this. And he's not above us in the sense of, I won't help them. You see, kings of this earth and Rome, they existed for their power. And God is powerful and Jesus exists and he is above us and he recognizes that as he should. And yet he came to this world, Philippians chapter 2 makes it clear, humbling himself and died on the cross for you and me. That is love. That is leadership. That is our king. Our king, as we see from Revelation chapter 19, is powerful. He is victorious. And those who are with him will be victorious. And of course, on the flip side, in chapter 19, those who are against him, will fall in destruction. The book of Revelation is very clear. There's going to be a war and the Lamb of God is on one side and everyone else is on the other. Who will we choose to ally ourselves with? Do we trust in Jesus for the victory or not? Today, let's make that change. Let's make that adjustment. Let's live today for our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I hope you join us tomorrow as we see what happens to everyone else. We see a judgment scene. We see what happens to the devil in Revelation chapter 20.